This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. In today's course, we have an awesome amped up flow just for you. So if you've been with us for the last two weeks, you probably are noticing how strong your body's getting, but you might notice that some of the initial gains you were getting at the beginning has started to taper off. So this amped up flow is exactly what you need for muscle confusion, which is essential for continuing your fat burn and losing weight. Also, this will help you bust through any mental plateaus or any boredom of your flow as as we kind of introduce some new moves and we also keep the intensity pretty high. Make sure to take child's pose whenever you need it. And in fact, that's where we're going to begin. So let's come down. Bring your knees wide. Let your belly drape between your thighs and extend your arms forward. Let your forehead drop down to the mat. Today's class will be a mixture of moves that you probably are familiar with, but we'll also have some different takes on familiar postures as well as new postures we haven't explored yet. So anytime we're introducing something new, give yourself a lot of grace and compassion for the learning process. And remember that yoga is a practice, not a perfect. So it's important to revisit things over and over and over again. It's okay if you don't get it the first time. Take a deep breath in and a big breath out. Now seal your lips, we'll begin that ujjayi breath, the ocean wave-like sound, in through the nose, out through your nose, again, in through your nose, out through your nose, great, take one more inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose, great, come on up to tabletop your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. Press down into your shin bones and draw the belly in. And we'll start to move through some gentle cow and cats. Lots of breath with movement today to keep our heart rate up and to find a lot of movement in the body. Also, so that we feel that breath to movement connection, which is essential for yoga. So on the inhale, it's cow pose, tilt the tail up, lift your heart. On your breath out, round your spine, press into your hands. Good, cow pose, inhale, big breath. Cat pose, round your back. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Great job, come through the center. So even when you're not moving, there's still this vinyasa quality, this breath with movement. Every inhale gives you a little space in the spine and every exhale, you'll notice the low belly draws in just a bit. Keep that kind of engagement. Let's go into some balance. Send your right arm forward, your left leg back. Zip the pubic bone up towards the belly button. Breathe in, then elbow to knee. Lengthen on your inhale. Exhale, elbow to knee. Reach it out. Long, breathe in. Last time, elbow to knee. Hug it in as far as you can. And then release. Great work, a little cow and cat to loosen up the spine before we move on to the other side. Great work. Come through this middle, lengthen the spine on your breath in, draw your belly button in on your breath out. Send your left arm forward, your right leg back. Take a deep inhale. On your exhale, elbow to knee, hug and squeeze. Lengthen, good, hug and squeeze. Reach it out, draw it in, lengthen, Last time, hug it in. Draw your belly button towards your spine as much as you can, and then release. Great work, a little movement. Inhale for your cow. 
Exhale for cat pose. One more time. Wonderful. Come to your neutral spine, tuck your toes, and push back to downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. Let the top of your head hang towards your thumbs. Engage your quad muscles and send your thigh bones back and your heels low. So if this is your first down dog today, it may feel good to pedal in the legs. Stretch out the hamstrings all the way down to the Achilles tendon. Lubricating the knees and the hip joints. Take one more breath in and out. Good, and then step the seams of your feet together and lift your right leg. Circle open your hip and bend your knee. So this is a bit of a balance challenge. You'll feel your arms start to warm. Stay strong in your arms, draw the belly in and tone it towards the spine so that you can free up your right hip for big hip circles. Draw really big circles with your knee like you had a Sharpie marker between your upper and lower leg bones and you could draw on the wall. Good, and now switch directions. Continue to tone the arms and press through your hands so you're really strong in your upper body. Nice. On your next breath in, level out your hips, lengthen your right leg. On your breath out, place your right foot down. Switch the weight into your right foot and lift your left heel up. Remember to press through both hands evenly, then circle open your hips to stack and bend your knee. Squeeze the heel to the butt and then begin to circle your knee. Big swoopy circles. The challenge here is to stay engaged in your arms, but free and fluid in your hips. Good, switch the direction. Nice work. Level out your hips, light up the legs, send it back. Good, now touch your left foot down. On your next breath in, look to your hands. On your breath out, step to a ragdoll pose at the top of your mat. Bend your knees generously and drape your belly between your thighs. For today's variation of ragdoll, interlace your fingers at the nape of your neck and draw your elbows in to point towards the floor. This will help you unzip your neck. It'll also increase the stretch for your low back. So if you notice any tugging, bend your knees more. We'll get plenty of time to stretch your hamstrings. Let this first ragdoll pose be about your back. Two more inhales and exhales. Maintain the ujjayi breath to maintain your heat. Release your hands down. Slide your hands up to your hips. Stand up and bring your hands to your heart. Great, so we're gonna move into some sun salutes to continue to build heat in the body. And if you've been with us for the last few days, you know I offer a lot of modifications for Chaturanga, which I'll remind you about as we go through. It's always important to listen to safety and to your body as you go through some more vigorous activity. On a breath in, reach up. On your breath out, fold forward. Take your hands to your shin bones, halfway lift, flatten your spine. On your exhale, plant your palms, step back to high plank, either lower halfway or use your knees. Upward facing dog, loop your shoulder heads back, lift your chest. Downward facing dog, lift up from your hips and drop your head towards your thumbs. Take a breath in and a breath out. Let's continue to build heat. Look forward, breath with movement, travel to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Forward fold, bow your head. Stand all the way up, reach up, inhale. Forward fold, all the way down. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take a breath in and a breath out. Last time, look forward. Step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. 
Stand up, reach up. Forward fold all the way down. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a breath in. This time, open mouth exhale. <sighs> Let's move on to sun B. Look to your hands. Step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pose. Sit low in your chair. Reach your arms up. So you know I'm a big fan of yoga poses that use the big burner muscles of our legs, of our glutes, of our core, and chair is definitely one of them. So sit really deep into your hips, but lift your heart up and stay long in your spine. So a lot of times people are folding forward in their chair. I want your heart up, your gaze bright. One more, inhale, forward fold, exhale, drop your head. Take your hands to your shins, halfway lift. Chaturanga, lower down. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Great, step your right foot forward next to your right thumb, warrior one. Connect your back heel down and lift your arms up. So as you root into your feet, reach up through the sides of your waist and spiral your pinky fingers in just a little bit so that your shoulders have a little more room and your neck can stay nice and long. If it feels okay in your spine, lift your heart and gaze up. Good, one more breath in. Chaturanga, breath out. So this is a lot of chaturangas today. If you need to hold plank or lower to your belly, please do. Warrior one on the left side, step your foot forward, connect your back heel down and rise up. You're looking for a heel to heel alignment or a little bit wider. So if you need to take your left foot closer to the edge of the mat, do so. Sink deep into your lunge, reach your heart up. Take a breath in. Good, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, press into your feet and hands. Downward facing dog, hips up high. Take a deep breath in, open mouth. <sighs> Let's take Sun B, breath to movement. Look to your hands, step or maybe lightly hop, top of your mat, halfway lift, forward fold, chair pose, sink low so you can reach high, forward fold all the way down, halfway lift, long spine, Chaturanga, or remember that you can skip it. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, warrior one, rise up, gaze up. Chaturanga right away, we're building heat. Upward facing, downward facing dog. Left foot forward, warrior one, step and rise. Chaturanga. Last time through that. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Take a moment in child's pose to gather your breath. Just a breath in and out here in child's pose. Always good to reset your breath, especially if you notice that the flow got you really amped up, which is good but you wanna be able to continue a smooth and steady breath. On your next inhale, lift to tabletop, hands and knees. Great, press back to downward facing dog. As we move on, step your right foot forward, come up to a high lunge. So similar to warrior one, except for your back heel stays high. Lift your torso over your hips. Allow your ribs and your armpits to point forward and reach your arms up. Good, take a breath in and lengthen your waist. Take another breath in, lengthen through your waist, reach up. On your exhale, hands to your heart, let's take a twist. Bring your left elbow to your right thigh. So we've been in this shape before in this course, but we're going to take it into a bigger transition. So pay attention to your back leg, which helps you lengthen your spine, 
as well as your front heel to engage the front leg from the ankle all the way up to the glute. Good, twist the heart to the thumbs. On your next inhale, warrior two. Cartwheel your arms open and spiral the back heel down. One of the things I love about a vinyasa style of yoga is that we get those fun transitions. And as we start to find a little more fluidity in the body, it almost feels like you're dancing. Press down into your front heel, lengthen up through your crown. On your next exhale, come to extended side angle. Bring your elbow light to your thigh, so you're not dumping down. You're still nice and lifted through the spine and take your back arm over your ear. Move the bottom waist long, turn your gaze up. Good, press through your front heel, reverse warrior. Big inhale, stretch up and back. And on your exhale, chaturanga. If you've had enough of those, you can always shift straight back to down dog. Up dog if you chose to lower. Downward facing dogs where we meet. Big breath in. Big breath out. <sighs> Let's take that on the left side. Step your left foot forward. Come up to your high crescent lunge. Torso over your hips. Reach up. So it's always a good idea to check in with what's grounded. Firm foundation through all four corners of your front foot. And spike your back heel over the ball mound of your back foot. One more breath in to get long through your spine. And on your breath out, hands to your heart, add the twist. Bring your elbow to the outside of your thigh. Strengthen through the back leg so you can lengthen through your spine. And then use your exhale to twist a little deeper. Good, one more in and out. Rinsing, detoxing, so good for you. Stay with the heat. And then inhale to warrior two, unravel, unwind, and sink down into the lunge. As you root through the outer edges of the feet, drag isometrically the arch sides of the feet, the inner thighs, and the pelvic floor up. Rebend your front knee and keep your crown tall. One more inhale. Extended side angle. Bring your elbow lightly to your thigh and sweep your back arm over your ear. Steer your tailbone towards your heel and reach through your top fingers. Press through your front heel, reverse your warrior. Big inhale to reach up and exhale, chaturanga. Or again, you can go straight to downward facing dog. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Look to your hands, step or lightly hop to the top of your mat. Halfway lift your chest, forward fold should feel really good after all of that leg work, but we're not done yet. Chair pose, sink low, reach your arms high. Good, and then take your hands to your heart. Continue to move your hips way back. So we're stimulating the leg muscles and the glutes and draw the skin of your heart up to your thumbs. Fill your lungs and let's find that twist. Left elbow to right thigh. Hug your inner thighs a lot. Lengthen your spine. Twist on your exhale. Return to chair pose. Big inhale. Good, prayer twist. Right elbow to left thigh. Tailbone back, heart forward. Twist with your exhale. Return to chair, keep your booty low, arms lifted. Good, and then hands to heart. Stand on your left leg and lift your right knee up. So a little balance challenge here. Even your toes are flared. That'll help you with your balance. Find one thing in the room that's not moving and let it be your drishti point, your, your focal point. Good, and then from here, a little challenge pose, a figure four chair. Cross your shin bone over the thigh bone. Sit back into a chair. So essentially here, you're getting a hip stretch and you're doing a single leg squat. So there's a lot going on. Lock your drishti focus and breathe, yogi. 
I can feel my leg and foot muscles shaking and quaking. That's an indicator that they're working for me. It's a good thing. Good. Unravel your feet. Stamp down, reach up. Good, hands to your heart and lift your left knee. So again, from your foot all the way up to your hip, everything's engaged. Belly is in, heart is lifted. Find your drishti and then cross your ankle and sit back into figure four chair. Gently drag the pubic bone up towards the belly button. It'll feel like your low back got a little longer. And then move your heart to your thumbs. One more in and out. Good. Unravel the feet, reach up, stand up. And a big forward fold, you earned it. Take your feet a little bit wide, drop your head. Pedal in the knees. Let your brain just fall out from your skull. Good. Now that you've released all of that work, we got just a little bit more ahead of us before we find our yummy Shavasana. Place your hands on your shin bones, halfway lift your heart, then step back to a high plank. So if you've done the core video with me, you're very familiar with high plank. And we're just going to add a little amped up challenge with side plank. So your feet can stay hips width distance or you can step them together. If they're together, as you root down into the right hand and lift the left hand up, that top ankle is going to stack. However, if that feels a little wobbly, take that front foot down so your feet are staggered instead. As you push into your bottom hand, lift the bottom hip up, and then a balance challenge, gaze up. One more breath. Good, hand down, plank pose. Swivel to the other side, left arm down, right arm up. Make your ankles strong. Lift the bottom hip. Gaze up to challenge your balance. One more breath in, chaturanga on breath out. Come to plank, lower down, and then find your belly. Bring your hands underneath your forehead. Take a deep breath in, and then open up. <sighs> One more time. <sighs> Feel your heart rate start to lower. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, press to tabletop. Downward facing dog. Now we've done all of that heat building work. Let's stretch deep into the glute and the hip in a pigeon pose. So bring your right shin forward, knee to your outer wrist, ankle comes across the mat, lengthen your left leg behind you. So for a lot of us, pigeon can be supported with a pillow underneath the front hip, or you can come onto your back and take those figure four legs, but on your back. Tuck your back toes just so you can start to square the hips off. Then untuck your back toes, lay your foot down, drape your heart forward. So I like to come into my forearms when my hips are feeling a little bit sticky and tight. It's just less intense than folding all the way forward. If you'd like to fold all the way forward, just be mindful of your front knee and your hip and breathe. You should feel pretty good on your body. Take one more breath in. Good, on your breath out, draw the belly in for spinal support. Walk back up into your hands and step back to down dog. Pedal out the legs. Good, let's take pigeon on the other side. Left knee forward, lengthen your shin widthways across the mat. If you don't feel balanced in your pelvis, grab a pillow and slide it underneath the front hip or flip onto your back and take a figure four. Once you feel level, move the chest up and then forward. And again, 
You can always come down to your elbows. You'll still get a great stretch for your glutes and your hip. You probably are also feeling your IT band quite a bit. That's the strip that runs down the side panel of the thigh. For a lot of us, it gets really tight. So after we do intense work, it's really important to stretch. One of the bonuses about yoga is that you're working on your flexibility and your strength simultaneously. So it's such a holistic approach. We get a lot done in a little bit of time. Good. Come up into your hands. Swing your back leg forward. We're going to come all the way down to our back. Recline down. Draw your knees into your chest. You might even feel the urge to rock side to side, so go with it. Great. And then extend your left leg long, your right knee into your armpit. Give it a big squeeze. Use your exhale breath for a supine twist. Stack your hips and cross your right knee over. It doesn't have to touch the ground. Your toe can touch the ground. Let your shoulders fall towards the floor. Twisting your spine after a lot of that work is a great way to reset, ring out. Good, return to the center. Switch sides, right leg goes long. Left knee up to the armpit. Just starting to absorb all the work that you've done. Stack your hips, cross the knee over. The shoulders go heavy to the floor. One of the best ways to break through a plateau or to reinvigorate your motivation for practice is to recognize how far you've come and to always end each and every practice and work out with gratitude. You have a body that works, you have air in your lungs, there's so many things going for you. Come back to the center and draw your knees into your chest. Take your forehead up to meet your knees. Draw in your biggest breath of the day. And then relax out into Shavasana. We did so much great work with some breath to movement, some higher energy poses, and even new poses like the side plank and the figure four. So as you come into this deep rest shape, I hope you feel proud of what you've accomplished as well as dedicated and really committed to continuing on with this course. Take just a couple deep inhales and exhales, settling the body, settling the nervous system, coming back to equilibrium, balance. Should feel so, so rewarding. Great. On your next breath in, stretch all the way through the arms. And on your breath out, come to a fetal pose, knees to the chest, roll to your side, and lay your head in your arm. As you press up to a seat, be slow and sweet and gentle on the body, and find a comfortable position for your hips to sink back. We'll meet with our hands at the heart. Well, it was so great to practice with you today. Thanks for taking the challenge to amp up your flow, move a little quicker today. I know that you're doing a great job sticking with this entire course, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Namaste. Today's bonus tip is all about metabolism. I bet you're excited because when it comes to metabolism, we all know that we want a fast one. We're not quite sure how to get one, do we even have a metabolism? Maybe you're confused. And when it comes to metabolism, there's a lot of mixed messages out there. If you're a woman who's over 30 and you have some questions about metabolism, it's probably because somebody once told you, well, once you hit 30, your metabolism goes down the tubes. Maybe, maybe not. So what can we do about it? Well, you're already on the right track by incorporating more exercise and specifically weight-bearing exercise, especially if you're a woman over 30. Because when we are looking at our exercise plan, 
We want to be able to incorporate body weight bearing activity or weight lifting so that we can build and keep our muscle tone. Muscle tone is essential for a metabolism. So maybe you're not a woman in their 30s or 40s or 50s. Maybe you're a young man in your 20s. It's also important for you. When it comes to keeping lean muscle mass on our body, this is one of the best ways that we can boost our metabolism long term. So yes, that means doing body weight bearing exercises like yoga, a power yoga practice, for example, or doing things where we are lifting weights. The reason that muscle tone is so important for metabolism is because it basically increases our body's natural need to burn more. And so the fuel that we have available is going to be utilized. And so then we feel like we have a fast metabolism. Metabolism is essentially just this process of using the fuel that's available in your body. So what are some things that slow down your metabolism? A sedentary lifestyle is number one. So if you work at a desk job and you're not getting up regularly to walk around, if you don't have an exercise program, then you are probably not doing your metabolism any favors. We also can look at the food that we're eating. We've talked a lot about what's going in. If you are constantly eating food that's highly processed, if you're constantly eating food that's refined, lots of white flour, lots of white sugar, you're not doing your metabolism any good. So things that you want to focus on if you're looking to boost your metabolism are committing to weight-bearing exercise, which you're already doing through this challenge, so that's the great news. Also, let's talk about food. Not only do we want to be mindful of what we're putting in, but how are we spacing out our meals? So when we're looking at a metabolism, very often when people go on a diet, they create like a period of time where they're basically starving themselves. And while there is a little bit to be said about not eating too often or not eating too much, we also don't want to deprive ourselves for too long because then our body basically starts to shut down and say, nope, I'm not sure when I'm going to get fed again, so I'm going to slow down. I'm going to suppress. I'm going to really get down to the lowest amount of food that I need to use so that I can sustain for a long period of time. We're basically wired to say, is this a famine? Do I need to prepare? But when we can space out our meals so that our brain knows that we're safe, that there is going to be another nutritious meal on the way, then our metabolism stays at a more consistent pace. Now, that's just a little bit of sort of the science background about it, but there's also a psychology component, which is also science. When we deprive ourselves, then we're basically not rewarding our pathways of good behavior. And so at the end of the day, we kind of just feel slumpy. We feel like we've been deprived all day. It makes us feel a little sad, a little depressed. And so then what do we do? We try to treat ourselves with food and we start to build this habit of food as reward and we tend to overdo it. And that's when we have those binge at the end of the day. We tend to sabotage ourselves by eating all the cookies. I've done it. I've been there. Absolutely. I think we've all done that. But when it comes to metabolism, that's not doing our metabolism any good, especially when you're overloading all of your calories in your day at the end of the day, and then you go to sleep, your fuel is not being used and you're probably not getting great sleep if you eat all of your calories right before you go to bed. So some simple tips if you want to have a metabolism that feels like it's on high octane. One commit and recommit to weight-bearing exercise as well as your cardio. You're already getting a lot of that right here in this challenge. But things like going for a run, going for a walk on a consistent basis, and doing things like lifting weights or doing weight-bearing exercise like yoga and power yoga is great for your metabolism. Also, the high-intensity training that we're doing, this hit interval training that we're doing in this challenge is wonderful for your metabolism because it basically is working with your heart and it's working with the oxygen in your blood so that your body is basically supercharged after those workouts. And then the last thing I'll say is look at the fuel. Are you fueling yourself consistently throughout the day? 
We talked a little bit in a previous uh, video about keeping a journal, and I would highly encourage you to not only write down what you're eating, but what times of day so that you can notice if there's always just this really long stretch that you're depriving yourself and maybe readdress What's your habit when you come out of that long stretch of deprivation? Do you immediately go eat all the cookies? If that's the case, then you probably are feeling a little bit starved. And it might be a good idea to go back and incorporate a healthy snack so that you don't have as long of a period to wait before you eat again. And your metabolism will thank you. These are really simple things with a really complicated topic because when it comes to metabolism, there's so many different variables, our age, our current weight, our hormones, what our gender is, all of those things. However, what we can do is really simple, stay active and stay mindful of what's going in. That way we're working with our best chance at keeping a metabolism that's raring to go. You're doing a great job in this challenge. Keep up the great work. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Get back to basics with the Couch to Confidence series, a 14-day complete beginner program from Julia Marie Yoga. Now streaming on Amazon. Introducing Yoga Plus offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.